Imagination creates reality. Today, I'm going to share with you a very captivating testimonial that actually proves that imagining creates reality, that we're actually imagining things and creating things before they actually happen in everything in your world. And this story is about the Titanic, the way the Titanic sunk and everything that happened with the Titanic, the size of the ship, the name of the ship and everything that happened and why it actually sunk and everything that created that event to happen was actually written in a book 14 years before the Titanic even sunk. So it was it, the, this was a story that was written and I'm going to share with you that testimonial today and this is very interesting. I know it's going to blow your mind. I absolutely love this because this proves that imagination creates reality. Okay, so in 1898, a struggling author named Morgan Robertson concocted a novel about a fabulous Atlantic liner far larger than any that it had ever built. Okay, so this was Robertson, and he loaded his ship with rich and complacent people and then wrecked it one cold night on an iceberg. So this is a this is a story, this is a book that was written, okay, 14 years before the Titanic sunk and it's exactly it exactly pans out the same way that the Titanic sunk, okay? So and this somehow showed the futility of everything and in fact the book was called Futility when it appeared that year published by the firm of um, MF Mansfield. 14 years later, a British shipping company named the White Star Line built a steamer remarkably like the one in Robertson's novel. The new liner was 66,000 tons displacement, and Robertson's in his novel was 70,000. See, see the similarities here, how close this is. There is no coincidence here that this was created from his imaginal act, and the real ship, which was the Titanic, was 882. 2.5 feet long. The fictional one in the book was 800 feet. Both could carry about 3,000 people and both had enough lifeboats for only a fraction of this number. But then this didn't seem to matter because both were labeled unsinkable or unshakable like the Titanic was labeled un unshakable or unsinkable. It could not be sunk. And that was it. And that was the same way it was written in this book 14 years before the before the Titanic even sunk. So on April 19, 1912, the real ship left the Southampton on her maiden voyage to New York. Her cargo included a priceless copy of the Rubaiyat of Omar Kaya. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And a list of passengers collectively worth $250 million. On her way over, she too struck an iceberg and went down on a cold April night. Robertson called his ship in his book, written 14 years before this happened, Robertson named his ship the Titan. The White Star Line called its ship the Titanic. See the similarities here. In the book, it was called the Titan. In real life, it was called the Titanic. This is, there's no coincidence here. So imagination creates reality. Had Morgan Robertson known that imagining creates reality, that today's fiction is tomorrow's fact, would he have written the novel Futility? And in the moment of tragic catastrophe, the conviction becomes more distinct to us than ever that life is a bad dream from which we have to awake. And the bad dream is caused by the imaginal activity of sleeping humanity. The bad dream is caused by imaginal activity of sleeping humanity. Imaginal activities may be remote from their manifestations and unobserved events are only appearance. Causation, as seen in this tragedy, is elsewhere in space and time. Far off from the scene of action and visible to all was Robertson's imaginal activity like a scientist in a control room directing his guided missile through space. All right, guys, I also want to cover Neville Goddard's words here from the beginning. This is chapter four. There is no fiction from the law and promise. Okay, so there is no fiction. If any imaginal activity can produce a physical effect, our physical world must be essentially imaginal. To prove this would require merely that we observe our imaginal activities and watch to see whether or not they produce corresponding external effects. 
If they do, then we must conclude that there is no fiction. Today's imaginal drama, which is fiction, becomes tomorrow's fact. If we had this wider view of causation, that causation is a mental, is mental and not physical, that our mental states are causative of physical effects, then we would realize our responsibility as a creator and imagine only the best imaginable. So be very careful what you're imagining and everything you're thinking, everything you're producing, everything you're directing, your internal dialogues. What are you imagining all day long? And be aware of this because this is what is creating your world. So be careful of what you're imagining. Uh, always imagine the best and think what is lovely and of good rapport. And most men and women believe that reality resides in the solid objects he sees around him as if, as in the 3D world. People think this is the real solid world that is in this world that the drama of life originates, but that's not true. That events spring, they think that events spring suddenly into existence created moment by moment out of physical facts. But causation does not lie in the external world of facts. The drama of life originates in the imagination of man. The real act of becoming takes place within man's imagination and not without. Everything stems from the internal world. Everything's created from within you being projected outwardly. The external world is created from inside of us. So remember to be constantly aware of what you're imagining all day long and make sure that it's something that you want to create for your future or create for somebody else. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And I really wanted to share this because this is so impactful that imagination creates reality and that this book was actually written 14 years before the Titanic sunk. And it was written the exact same way, a huge ship hitting an iceberg and then sinking with not enough lifeboats and how it was, it was tagged as unsinkable, just like the Titanic was. And even the name of the ship in the book that was written 14 years ago was the Titan. And the real ship was the Titanic. There's no coincidences here. This is absolutely created from this imaginal act that this author concocted 14 years before it happened. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. Don't forget to give me one thing you guys are grateful for or leave any comments, any ideas for future content. And I'm going to post that card for you for my sleep meditations on the screen for you. You can click on that and find the perfect sleep meditation for you to manifest anything you want to come into your life as you're falling asleep. Imagination creates reality, and what you fall asleep with is what you're gonna get in the future. So fall asleep with those sleep meditations. They will absolutely create your future exactly how you want it to be. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.